So in part one of Golden Lions, Golden Dragons, I made the claim that Jaime and Cersei are secretly the Mad King's bastards, and that Tyrion was the only son from the union of Lord Tywin and Joanna Lannister. I also reviewed Yandel's description of Tywin and Aerys' friendship, and concluded it to be sincere. At the end of my last video, I asked the question, what could have caused the falling out between these two friends? And my answer was, a woman. Specifically, Joanna Lannister. Joanna was the first child born of Sir Jason Lannister and Marla Prester. Sir Jason was Tywin's uncle, making Joanna and Tywin first cousins. Joanna had been living in King's Landing, serving as a lady-in-waiting to Rhaella since 259 AC, three years before Aerys' coronation, four years before she wed Tywin. Apparently, Joanna was the only one Tywin ever really loved. Maester Pycelle writes in a letter to the Citadel, Only Lady Joanna truly knows the man beneath the armor and all his smiles belong to her and her alone. I do avow that I have even observed her make him laugh, not once, but upon three separate occasions. Okay, so if Tywin loved Joanna so much, why did he wait so long to have children with her? Jaime and Cersei were born three years after Tywin and Joanna tied the knot, and Tyrion followed seven years after the twins. Seems out of character for a man who was so obsessed with family and heirs and all that nonsense, but let's put that aside for right now. I want to talk about Ares during the beginning of his reign. Yandel says that the king was lively and active in his early years. By this he means Ares loved music, getting down, and throwing parties as an excuse to fill his court with young fair maidens. Yandel also feels the need to tell us that people compared Ares to Aegon the Unworthy in that they both had more than their share of mistresses. Also have to mention that his sister wife, Queen Rhaella, seemed to be cool with it, or at least she turned a blind eye. Here are where things get tricky. King Ares and his sister gave the realm an heir in the form of Rhaegar, born amongst the flames of Summer Hall. Since they were still young, everyone assumed that they would produce more children and get the Targaryen numbers back up to the way they were before the days of the dance. But those hopes quickly faded because Rhaella would have two miscarriages, one in 263 AC and 264 AC, followed by a stillborn daughter in 267, a son named Daeron who only lived half a year, another stillborn, then another miscarriage. Finally, one more son named Aegon, born two months premature. That's seven children that were lost to Ares and Rhaella. Makes more sense to why Ares slept with so many other women, and why Rhaella looked the other way. Well, that is, until Ares fooled around with the wrong woman. Yandel writes that the queen did not approve of Ares turning my ladies into his whores, and that Joanna Lannister was not the first lady to be dismissed abruptly from her grace's service. So Joannis was sent back to Casterly Rock, and then the twins were born. But wait, Tywin's back in King's Landing serving his hand. He didn't move back west until after the death of his father, which was in 267 AC. Seems unlikely that Tywin would send his precious wife back to the rock while carrying his heir. However, sending off your wife because the queen demands it, after she catches her husband brother sleeping with one of her ladies-in-waiting, who might now be carrying the king's own bastard, makes way more sense. I need to also point out that Yandel states on that the night of Tywin and Joanna's wedding, Ares presided over the wedding feast and the bedding. But we can't go to Yandel for everything. So let's go to someone else who might have some insight on the issue, Sir Barristan Selmy. In A Dance with Dragons, Daenerys Chapter 7, while talking to Sir Barristan, Danny inquires about her father and mother's love life, if they ever truly cared for one another, or if they might have loved someone else in the days before they were wed. Selmy chooses his words carefully, Martin writes, when discussing her father. Prince Ares, as a youth, he was taken with a certain lady of Casterly Rock, a cousin of Tywin Lannister. When she and Tywin wed, your father drank too much wine at the wedding feast, and was heard to say that it was a great pity that the Lord's right to the first night had been abolished. A drunken jape, no more. But Tywin Lannister was not a man to forget such words, or the... The liberties your father took during the betting. Wow, that was revealing. Well, maybe not so much. Though, Sir Barristan, I gotta put you on the spot here, cause I think you're definitely playing down the whole issue concerning Ares and Joanna. It was only kitchen gossip. The whispers of washerwomen and stable boys. Right. More like you were forced to stand guard while your king served as a third wheel during the newlyweds' betting or, at the least, stood guard during some smush session involving Joanna and Ares. Remember, Barristan had been serving in the King's Guard since the reign of Aegon V, 
I think it's safe to say, as a proven warrior, Barristan was more than likely to be assigned to the guarding of the king rather than someone else in the royal family. If this assumption of mine is correct, that means Barristan's chances of knowing more about this affair has greatly increased. Hey, wait, did he say an affair? Yep. Hold on. I can see Ares finding some pretense in order to weasel his way into the betting ceremony. But Joanna? An affair? With the Mad King? Well, you might be right. Oh wait, you're forgetting a major detail in all of this. Joanna gave birth to Jamie and Cersei shortly after Rhaella dismissed her from court, three years after her marriage to Tywin, not the day after the wedding. This leads me to believe that Joanna and Ares were fooling around for years, and that it only ended after Queen Rhaella discovered the truth. Being that Joanna is a lady-in-waiting, which is basically the closest thing a princess or a queen ever knows to having a real friend, you can see why Rhaella would refer to Joanna as a whore and banish her from court. So I'm going to end this video right here, and in the next one, we'll go back to Jamie in A Feast for Crows, see if Cersei shares any of the same traits as Ares, and I'll show you how I know that Tyrion is a Lannister in Golden Lions, Golden Dragons, Part 3.